All right. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. So tonight we're going to be talking about really continuing a conversation we've had about can God do it? Let God do it. And so it's, we're going to focus tonight on <laughs> is it too hard for God? That's what we're going to be focusing on. Is it too hard for God? Is your Are your problems too big for God to handle? We're going to look at some key verses, and we're going to look at some times that that didn't quite play out the way that uh, somebody tried to intervene themselves, and we'll take a look at that as well. So first we'll get some music, and then we will jump into the message. All right, so if you will bow your heads, we will pray in, and then we'll get into this message here. Dear Lord, we just come to you right now, Lord, and we just ask that you bless this message, Lord. We ask that you let it be your words and your meaning, and Lord, we just ask that, that it touch each and every one of our hearts, that we understand this, not just in our in our minds, that, but that we understand this in our hearts, and that we can take this and use this in our every day life. Lord, we just ask that this message touch us in a different way. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. So, again, we're going to be talking about nothing is too hard for God, right? So that's that's the topic. Nothing is too hard for God. Is something too hard for God? Is your problems too big? Is, your, is what you're going through too big for God? And, I mean, automatically, everyone that, that knows God goes, well, no, no, of course not. And the Bible repeats that so many different times that nothing 
is too hard. Nothing is impossible for God. It, it, it repeats it. I didn't count how many, but I've got a list here of over a hundred different places where it talks about just that. We're going to look at a few key ones um, that really stood out to me. And we're also going to talk about something, something else that happened. So the first one that I got is in Jeremiah. And it's in Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 17. Jeremiah 32, 17. And it says, O Lord God, you yourself made the heavens and earth by your great power and with your outstretched arm. Nothing is too difficult for you. And this is Jeremiah talking to God as he's going through very difficult times. Read the book of Jeremiah and understand exactly what is going on here. And you will see that this is a very powerful statement that Jeremiah is making in the midst of very difficult times. And then the next one that I had is 10 verses after that. So Jeremiah 32, 27. Jeremiah 32:27 This is God talking now talking to Jeremiah and it says look I am Yahweh the God of all flesh is anything too difficult for me Jeremiah says in step in verse 17 Nothing is too hard for you. And the Lord answers and says, is anything too hard for me? Is anything too hard for God? And we could go through so many Old Testament texts, especially with the prophets and all the things that they went through in the Old Testament, and read all the different times that God says, nothing is too hard for me. All the different times, you know, speaking on this topic, nothing is too hard for God. And we know that there's, I didn't count however, however many there are where it talks about that nothing's too hard for God. But one thing is in there that we do know, I do know a number two. How many times it says fear not? Does anybody know how many times in the Bible it says fear not? 365, one for every day of the year. Fear not, for I am God. So if it says fear not 365 times, that's also playing into nothing is too big for me. What are you worried about? What is what, 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 do, you got, what do you got going on that is too big for me to handle? What do you have going on that is too big for God to handle? Are there things in our life that are too big for us to handle? Of course there are. There's a lot of things in this world that we cannot handle. We, it's too big for us to take care of. Yet we still try. And we try, and we try, and we try to take all this on ourselves. And the problem is too big for us. But how big is your God? How big is your God? And, you know, we've heard that said a lot of times, and a lot of different people will say that say that phrase. Well, is your problem too, if, if your problem is too big, then, you know, how big is your God? Let's actually look at what we're saying when we say that. And I don't want to say a cliche here, but how big is your God? Another way to say that is how much of that are you giving to God? How much of that problem are you actually giving to God? 
And how much are you holding on to yourself? How much of that do you trust God with to fulfill the promises that he's never broken? And how much of that are you still holding on to yourself because you just don't trust that he's going to take care of all of it? I'm going to take a look at another one. We talked a lot about, so far we've talked a lot about Old Testament. We looked at two in Jeremiah. We've talked uh, all the different prophets. There's something in there about I'm God. Don't don't let somebody tell you this. Don't let somebody tell you that. Look at Moses. Look at, look at all the different people throughout, all the different prophets through the Old Testament. Every one of them, at some point, God said, don't let anybody say anything bad about you because I'm with you. Don't worry. I'm not going to leave you. I'm here with you. I, there's nothing that's going to happen to you. I'll protect you. There's so many different ways that you could look at that in the Old Testament. What about the New Testament? Let's look at Matthew. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. So go ahead and flip over to Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. I'm going to take a drink real quick. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. Matthew 19, 26. So, it says, But Jesus looked at them and said, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. And again, we look at that and we kind of, a lot of people, kind of, and it's not a lot of people, all of us at some point do this. We'll look at that, we'll look at what he's saying there and we almost kind of fairy tale it. Well, yeah, everything's possible. Everything's possible with God. You know, I, I, you know, with with people with men, that's impossible. You can't you can't do that. But you know, yeah, sure, God can. And we almost kind of fairy tale it off to where it's 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 not we don't we don't put stock into it. You know, it's like you know, speaking of stock, it's like you know, you see somebody over here that, that that's investing in the stock market or investing in their Roth IRA or whatever, and you go, oh yeah, that's great for them, and they end up a millionaire, but you never put a cent into yours, and then you wonder why. You wonder why you don't have what they've got. Because they put in, they trusted it. They put stock into it, literally. And, and I'm not a financial, that's not what I'm saying, but I'm using that as an analogy. You wonder why things aren't working a certain way. And Jesus tells us right there, with men, with people, People can't handle all this stuff. So there are, there's a lot of things that we can't handle. It's impossible with people to do these things. But with God, nothing's impossible. All things are possible. How much do you actually trust that? How much stock would you put into that? How much stock would you put into God taking care of something? How much do you trust God to take care of it? And how much are you going to hold on to yourself and try to do it your own way? How much are you going to try to hold on to that and do it your own way without God? The next one that I got is Luke chapter 1, verse 37. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. Luke 31, uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 37. And it very simply says, For nothing will be impossible with God. 
very simply said, for nothing will be impossible with God. And this is actually talking about <laughs> the birth of Jesus. This is talking about them telling Mary, the angel telling Mary that she was going to be pregnant without, while still a virgin. Nothing is impossible. With God. Nothing. But how much thought do you put into that? Because did Mary believe that the first go around? Did Mary really believe that? Not not straight out. Because in verse 30, 34, Mary asked the angel, How can this be since I have not been intimate with a man? So she's questioning, how is this possible? How can this possibly be? And part of the response is, for nothing is impossible with God. But again, are you stuck on that? How could that be? How could that possible? How could, how could God take care of that? Are you stuck on that aspect? Or are you going to actually trust that God can take care of whatever it is that you've got going on? And again, we like to stick our hands in things and try to take care of things our, ourselves. How often does that work out well for you? How often do does that work out well that <laughs> you know that there's a problem that's too big for you to handle, that there's not... You can't really do this yourself, but you still try to anyways. How often does that work out well for you? Let's take a look at somebody that it didn't work out too well to begin with whenever he tried to intervene himself. Let's go back to the Old Testament. Go to Genesis. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 18, verse 14. Genesis 18, 14. We're almost done flipping. Almost. Genesis 18, 14. So, this is talking about Abraham and Sarah. This is talking about Abraham and Sarah. And if you know this story, Abraham, Abram, <clears throat> before he was known as Abraham, was promised by God that he would be the father of many nations, that his sons would be more than the stars in the sky. He, could, he couldn't count his, the number of, of offspring he would have, no more than you could count the sands on the, the grains of sand on the beach. But here he is, this 99-year-old guy who ain't got no kids. So, in Genesis 18, 14, it says, is, uh, but the Lord said to Abraham, we're going to back up to 13, but the Lord said to Abraham, why? Did Sarah laugh, saying, can I really have a baby when I'm old? Is anything impossible for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will come back to you, and in about a year, she will have a son. Sarah denied it. I did not laugh, she said, because she was afraid. But he replied, no, you did laugh. So again, we have Sarah laughing whenever she is told that she's going to have a baby because Abraham and Sarah were really old at this point. And Abram had already been promised way back that he would be the father of many nations. And here they are, super old now, 
he still ain't got no kids. And by the way, if we go back and look at Genesis 17, verse 17, so just like a page back or so, Genesis 17, 17, we talk about Sarah laughing. Genesis 17, 17, Abraham fell face down. Then he laughed and said to himself, can a child be born to a 100-year-old man? Can Sarah, a 90-year-old woman, give birth? And by the way, I apologize. I was wrong. At this point, he actually did have Ishmael. I apologize. I, I, I got it. I said that incorrectly. He did have Ishmael at this point. He did have Ishmael at this point. Abraham did. And that was my point that I was going to make, and I, I misspoke. But <clears throat> Abram, before he was Abraham, had been promised that he would be the father of many nations that he would have offspring, countless offspring, and they would rule over, over the land. And he was promised all of this. But as he gets up in age here, you know, he's he's 90 years old or so. Not, he was 99 whenever he had uh, whenever he had Isaac. He's in his 90s, and he still doesn't have kids. So instead of waiting on God's promise, they intervened themselves. And Sarah said, you know, I, maybe it's me that can't have kids. So, you know, I know God promised that, that we would have kids and he promised you that you would specifically have offspring. So here's my handmaid. And Abraham had Ishmael with Hagar, Sarah's handmaid. How well did that turn out for anyone? It didn't turn out well for them. If you don't know the story, I would encourage you to read that. It didn't turn out well for anyone. It caused a lot of issues. As you could imagine, it would. Hagar finds out she's pregnant, and she starts kind of getting, suppose Sarah thinks that she's getting a little too high and mighty on her, you know, on her stance. And she goes to Abraham and says, you know, you're, now that my handmaid is pregnant with your, with your kid, now she thinks that she's all that, and, uh, you know, I don't really appreciate that. And Abraham says, well, you know, I don't really want anything to do with her. So she, she's your handmaid, and you do whatever you want to her. So then Sarah starts mistreating Hagar. And Hagar takes her baby Ishmael and takes off out into the desert, and they're about to starve. So there's, and then there it goes on from there. There's a lot of stuff involved in that. It, the point is, it didn't work out well for anyone. For anyone. Because instead of waiting on God to fulfill the promises that he's already made, and he's never broken his promises, like the rest of us, maybe not to that extreme, hopefully you're not doing stuff like that, but we all try to intervene and do things ourselves instead of just trusting that God is going to work it in his own time. And if you would just be patient, and I know that's a dirty word, trust me, I know, <laughs> I'm not that patient. I don't like waiting on God sometimes. It's, it, it hurts. It's painful. But God's working it out in his time. Whenever it's time. And that problem, Abraham was 99 and Sarah was 90 whenever they had Isaac. It wasn't time until that point. Until that point, it wasn't time for Abraham to have Isaac. But we get impatient. And we try to do things ourselves. We try to take over and we try to do everything and put all this weight on our shoulders ourselves. And we can't do it. 
It's not ours to carry. It's not our burden to carry. So we go back to that. How big is your God? You think what you're carrying on your shoulders is too much for him? Do you think that you're going to burden God with your burden? You think he can't take care of it in an instant? And then you go, well, if he could take care of it in an, in an instant, why can't? Why doesn't he? Because it's not time. Because if you got everything that you wanted exactly when you wanted it, think about how messed up you'd be. Think about how messed up you would be if immediately when you wanted something, you immediately received whatever it was that you were wanting in that second. Let's just let's just let's just really think about this for just a second. Because a lot of people put God and they try to compare God to like a genie in a bottle. You know, only pull him out whenever you want something, rub the lamp, and he's he's supposed to grant you some wishes, and if he doesn't, you can get mad at him, right? We've seen <laughs> we've seen in some different, you know, Disney movies and stuff. How often did that work out? Well, watch Aladdin. Not really, don't really watch Aladdin if you if you don't want to, whatever. <clears throat> but in Aladdin, he wastes, I don't it's been a long time since I watched that, but he wastes like two of his wishes. Because he thinks he wants something, but it's not what's best for him. God is not a genie in a bottle that's going to give you something that is not the best for you. Can he take care of anything in the world? Anything that you've got going on? Absolutely. He created everything, so yeah. <laughs> I mean, if he created everything, if he keeps everything in perfect balance... And all the, you know, all the different things that go into keeping all the oxygen levels right and the, and the, the plants breathing in the, 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 the carbon dioxide and the oxygen and keeping everything in a balance, keeping the, the earth at a specific distance away from the sun so that we're not too hot, not too cold. We're in that, that Goldilocks zone, as they like to call it. If you can keep all of that in balance and make everything in here and do all these other magnificent things that we can't even comprehend. Science still can't figure out exactly how it all works. If you can do all of that, can he take care of your problem? Absolutely. Is he a genie in a bottle? No. Is he going to just pop out when you, you know, keep it in your pocket, just pull it out and rub it and say, no, I really want that. He's, a, he's our father, right? Most of us have kids. Most of us, most of us have kids, or at the very least, you got nieces or nephews or whatever. A little kid comes up to you and, and says, well, can, can I have ice cream before I eat my, my dinner? There may be an occasion here or there where you allow that. But the general answer is going to be no. No. Just because you want it right now doesn't mean that that's what's best for you. Just because you want something right now doesn't mean that that is what's best for you. And God is our Father looking out for what is best for us in the time and place that it is best for us to have it. So, to sum it all up, Nothing is too hard for God. Nothing is too big for God. It's not ours to carry. Quit trying to take it back from God. Quit trying to hold on to it and say, God, I'm going to let you have this part, but not this part. Give it to him and trust him that he can take care of it when it is right to take care of the way that it is supposed to be taken care of to benefit you the most.
Give it to God. Your burdens are not a burden to him. He's not up there with a million different phone lines lit up going, this is God, how can I help you? Please hold. He doesn't have to do that. You're not burdening him with your requests. And I've actually had someone say that one time, that they thought they felt like they were burdening God, that he was too busy to answer their prayers. So they just try to do everything themselves. That's not going to work out for you too well. Give it to God. Let him do it. What he wants you to do. He wants you to trust him. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and close this one out. So if you will bow your heads and pray with me. Dear Lord, we just come to you right now, Lord, and we just ask that you help heal anyone that is struggling right now, Lord. We ask that you give them the peace and the comfort to know that you are there in that situation and you are looking out for their best interest, Lord. Just give them that peace and that knowledge that, that you're working on it, that you're there with them, working on it to benefit them, to make them stronger, to get them the best outcome in any situation that they're going through. Lord, we ask that you help give us the strength, and not the strength to do it ourselves, but the strength to trust you with it. Lord, we ask that you give us that strength that we can that we can let go. Not the, not the strength to hold on to it, but the strength to let go. And Lord, we ask that you just give us a blessed night, a good night's sleep tonight, Lord. We ask that we can rest in you and that you give us a blessed tomorrow. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. So, I will see you guys Sunday morning, Sunday morning service, Sunday at 11 a.m. We'll be going into the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel. Until then, I love you guys, and I will see you later.